GIMP is a free image manipulation program. It's like a Photoshop alternative that you can download for free. Go ahead and go to GIMP.org and download the latest version here on the website. I've already got it um, downloaded on my computer down here at the bottom bar. We're going to open up GIMP. It's an open source program, um, which I love. It just, I feel like it democratizes uh, really useful tools. It's not as user friendly as Photoshop is, but it is really powerful. It's got the fundamental power of Photoshop already there. Don't, don't close it. Don't control alt delete it. It just takes a while. I've seen this before. Ah! It's doing something. Don't give up on GIMP loading up on your computer. It just takes forever to index your hard drive. Alright, so GIMP is a multi-windowed uh, uh, workspace. Isn't there a single window? I thought they added that. Single window mode. Yay! All right, we are up and running. The first thing we're gonna do is I've actually created a meme template for GIMP that has uh, a bunch of assets for you to use already inside of it, and it's a great way for us to kind of take a look. All right, so if you look over here, this is the layer panel. This is all of the layers that you have to manipulate inside of your canvas, which is right here. Right here, the window, this is for brushes. These are the different brushes that you can use to draw. We have some different textures that you have access here uh, from this tab, and then different gradients uh, in this tab. And then on the left-hand side, up here at the top, we have all of the different tools uh, that we can use. And then down here, we have the tool options. So as I collect these different tools, the options change here on the left-hand side. I guess just a look at, these are all folders here. So if I hit the little twirl down arrow, um, we, it reveals all of the different layers that are inside of that folder. We can click on the uh, eyeball to either enable or disable um, those folders. You can do the same thing with uh, layers individually. Also, in the layers panel, we have some more tabs up here, which we have access to the red, green, and blue channels. Um, these are paths, and here's our history. If we would like to go back in our history, we can access that here. Okay, before we actually do make something, there's something I want to show you guys which really kind of threw me for a loop just messing with the program. And this is something that you're definitely going to want to turn on. I don't know why this is not on by default. I guess there's workflows where you wouldn't want this on, but you'll notice here that Skittles is a folder. And Skittles has a, some other folders inside of it, and those folders have folders. These puppets have a lot of different um, layers going on. I want to move Ralph, right? So I have the move tool selected. And when I go to move it, it just moved the body. So I'm gonna Apple Z, undo that. And then if I try it again and I select here, it just moved that top mouth part. And if, let's try it one more time. I'm gonna move, move the glasses. All right, so we can see what's happening here. What it's doing is it's moving the layer that the cursor is touching, that the cursor is over. But that's usually not what you wanna do. Usually what you wanna do is you wanna select the layer and move it. Now, if you go over here to the left tool options uh, under move, you'll see pick a layer or guide or move the active layer. You're going to want to check move the active layer. And now whatever we have selected here is going to move. All right. It didn't move the glasses, but that's because the glasses is actually part of this folder up here. Let's go ahead and come up with a plan of attack here um, for what we want to create. So I want, to, I want to copy this meme, but I want to say, look at me, this is my meme now. I'm stealing the meme, guys. I want the original picture of this. I'm the captain now. All right, this should work. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and view image. I'm gonna go ahead and copy image, right click and copy. I'm gonna go back to GIMP. I'm gonna hit Apple Paste, that paste in the layer. I'm gonna drag it up at the top. I'm gonna to select the scale tool, and I'm gonna drag this out. Now, if I hold the shift key, it constrains the proportions. So that way, as I scale it, 
it doesn't change its ratio. I want it to look the same, just I want it to be bigger. That's the size I want. I'm gonna move it over to the left. Now, if I hold the Apple key as I move, uh, control key on PC, it'll constrain the, uh, the movement to either side to side or up and down. It'll constrain it to the X plane or the Y plane. I'm gonna turn off the sunglasses. We don't need the sunglasses. Okay, so when I pasted the, the image into the GIMP file, it created a layer up here at the top of the panel and it says it's a floating selection. It's a pasted layer. It's not quite a layer. I can't move it. Uh, so I have to commit to it and then GIMP will make it a layer. I'm gonna double click the icon here and then it's gonna ask me to edit the layer attributes. I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a name, the captain, hit enter. And now it's turned it into an actual image and it's an actual layer now. So now I can move it into this folder right here and it's below the text up here at the top. All right, so now we have the captain, which is what we wanted. Let's go ahead and change this text, right? So you have to work around some of GIMP's idiosyncrasies. When I try to select all and I type new text, it's, it's, it's not using the same font and font sizes that I had previously. Um, so I'm gonna undo that. And then to get around that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the middle stuff, the middle text here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and type in my new text. And then I'm gonna delete those other two letters that I don't need. That's just kind of a workaround um, to get it to um, keep the same font and font sizes. I don't know if there's a better way to do that, but that's just what I'm coming up with right now. A little bit far to the right, so I'm gonna move it over to the left a little bit, center it up. All right, let's go ahead and do the same thing for the bottom here. I'm gonna hit T for text. I'm gonna select the text here in the middle, and then I'm gonna type in this, is my meme now. I'm gonna delete those other two letters. I'm gonna Apple A or Control A to select all the text and I need to make it smaller. Let's go ahead and try, it's at 140 right now. Let's try 110, hit enter, and there we go. That's the, that's the right size. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to the move command and let's just go ahead and center this back up. All right, so look at me, this is my meme now. Ralph is gonna steal this meme. I wanna take Ralph and I wanna put him on top of the captain. So I've moved the layer, which is a folder that has a bunch of layers. Um, each of these has a different angle. I need to find an angle that kinda matches that one, so I believe that's the left quarter here. We're gonna need to scale this, it's too big. We're gonna hit the scale tool. All right, so I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit the chain to constrain the proportions, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and size it. Let's try something like that. I'm gonna hit scale. Now I'm gonna go back up to the move tool, move him up over his head. I think something like that is okay. His head should probably be bigger, but I still want to see a little bit of his ears, so I'm just gonna keep it like that for now. So I'm gonna hit the rotate tool. Select one of the corners, and then here you have the angle in which it's rotating, and you can just move this bar. I'm gonna do negative six degrees, rotate. So what I wanna do is I wanna put the web bunny head on here, but I wanna take off Ralph's face and see if I can put this guy's face on Ralph, because that's gonna make it brilliant. But that's also gonna help us learn some other tools. So down here in the left corner uh, folder, we can turn off his eyes, and then we wanna scroll down, and we wanna turn off the mouth. All right, so now we just kinda of have the body and the eyebrows. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse Ralph again, so that way it doesn't take up too much space. All right, so we're gonna duplicate the captain meme, so that way we can put a version on top of itself and cut the face out and put it on top. I'm gonna select the layer, and then down here at the bottom of the layers panel is a duplicate button. So it's just made a copy. I'm gonna drag the copy on top of Ralph, okay? And Ralph disappeared because the image is not on top of it. So with this layer, we're going to use the eraser tool, which we're gonna bring the size up. Now this is the really, really rough version, uh, rough way to do this. There are other tools that are available within GIMP 
to really um, finesse look at the cutouts that you're trying to make. But this is just the way, the quick and dirty way to kind of do it. Maybe it should just be the ears. So weird. There are tools here that will kind of give you a better cutout if you want to use something like uh, this pen tool. You can kind of drag around and, and finesse these, these edges. And then once you have something cut out uh, and you connect and you connect it, you hit Apple, click on the point to close the loop. And then you can go up here and now you have this path selected and you can use this path to cut out um, whatever you're doing. But the, we're, just, we're just looking at basics here, kind of like navigating around. This meme did not come out very, it turned out very well. Oh man, that's really bad. Can I save it by putting the eyes, his eyes on top of the other guy's eyes? So I'm gonna take the eyes and I'm gonna drag them over the captain. Unfortunately, you can't multiple select layers in GIMP, or not, not to my knowledge, you can't. So I'm, at one at a time, I'm gonna kind of replace his eyes here. <laughs> I'm gonna click eraser. I'm just gonna drop down this just a little bit more. That's so hideous. All right, well, now what I wanna do here is I wanna delete some of like this this stuff happening here. I want to get rid of this head because this is like his new head. All right, so what I noticed is this little bit right here, I can't clone out from the background because it's actually part of this puppet layer which is on top of it. So to get rid of that part, I'm just gonna use the eraser tool like we did before. But I actually need to select the layer that's visible which is this body layer. I'm gonna select that and then just erase. There we go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna select the clone stamp because we're gonna clone out his head right here in the background which is uh, connected to um, the background layer which we uh, created. We're gonna duplicate the background layer because we're gonna be modifying it. So we wanna duplicate it just in case we need to go back to the original. So with the duplicate selected, and the duplicate should be on top of the original because that's the one that's uh, visible, we're gonna select the clone stamp. When you have the clone tool uh, open, you're gonna need to make sure that perspective clone is checked. I'm happy with the size. I'm gonna hit Apple or Control on PC and click to find my reference point. So now, when I click down and I use the brush, you can see the cross of where it's referencing that clone from. So it's like a brush, but it's copying the other parts of the image. I wanna get up here, but if I go up here, it's gonna start getting this texture. So I'm gonna reselect my reference point, just right here. This is all the same color, so it doesn't really matter. And I'm just gonna come in here, I'm gonna start filling it. All right, we have a little bit of stuff happening here. I don't really know what that's about. What, where is that coming from? So just disable layers and enable them until you find out where it's coming from. Okay, so it, it is coming from the background layer, but when I turn the background layer off, it's still there. So it's part of that layer that we erase that's on top of the bunny. You see that? So let's go and select that layer, and let's select the eraser, and just kind of get rid of that little piece of hair that's bothering me. That should do it. Let's re-enable this background layer, that the one that has the clone on it, and boom. <laughs> All right, so we made pretty much the best meme ever uh, that you could possibly ever imagine in this tutorial, but we also did go through a lot of different tools that we, you would use um, getting up and running with GIMP here. So then after you have your meme, just go up to File, um, Save As. So if I save it as uh, XCF, it'll be editable so I can come back and edit these later. And just go ahead and hit Save. So now if you open up that file in GIMP, you'll have all of uh, the layers here that we did from the tutorial. Now if you want to upload this onto a social media platform of some kind, you're going to want to go to export. And then in export, you drop down select file types, and here are all the different file types that you can use. I like PNGs. 
Um, JPEGs are also very popular. I'm going to go ahead and you just use the same exact file name here, just with .png. We've got some options here. Hit export. And boom. Now you can go upload that file and you're good to go. That's the basics of using GIMP. I hope your meme that you're creating is cooler than this one, but I think that we went through uh, a lot of the different tools that you can use here on GIMP, discovered some of the tools that are a little bit idiosyncratic and things that you need to check or not check to make sure that they behave as you would expect them to behave. Let me know if this tutorial was uh, helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. And that's it. Happy memeing, happy gimping, and until next time, slap a bunny on it. If you want to make some web bunny memes, we would love real talk. We'd love to have you. Web Bunnies is an open source shared universe and all the images and assets are available to download and for you to use. So cook up some Web Bunnies meme sauce and post it in the subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash Web Bunnies.